What's up, happy travelers? This is Kelly and Kevin from The Awkward Tourists. This is our Awkward Travel Chat, episode number five. Now, according to our Instagram votes, today we are talking about our trip to Egypt. Yep. I'm really happy that you guys decided to have us talk about Egypt because this is, when we first started this idea of these travel chats, that's the one place that I really wanted to talk about the most. Yes. Um, it was, I don't, I don't want to use the word one of our best trips, but it was definitely memorable. The most, one of the most memorable. Uh, challenging. Re rewarding. Rewarding. Very, very rewarding. <laughs> um, definitely challenging. Interesting. Yep. Gained a lot from that trip. Um, it, it was, it was awesome and it was terrible at the it, same time. <laughs> it was awesome. It was one of the hardest trips we've ever been on. Definitely, um, but definitely one of the most rewarding and most awesome. We saw some really incredible stuff. Um, it was not very relaxing. No. So, we visited Egypt in October of 2016, mm -hmm. so about three and a half years ago. And at the time we visited, I don't know, I can't speak to what it's like now, but at the time we visited, tourism was still very, very low because of um, the Arab Spring and just all their changes in government that they had been having. So yep. they didn't have a huge um, influx of tourism at that time. So they were very, very happy to see us. Yep. I, I think it may have changed a little bit since then, but it, it was five years after the, their last revolution. So it was still pretty... I didn't really ever feel unsafe there, I'll say that. But you could tell that tourism was really down and people were very desperate for tourists to come. Yes. So. so we flew into Cairo, mm -hmm. which is um, obviously the biggest city in in Egypt. And what we didn't know at the time, Cairo has 29 million people. It's a big city. Yeah. And if you're sensitive to culture shock, Egypt is going to be difficult for you. Yeah. Luckily, we came from Los Angeles and we stayed a couple days in Europe first. And that was kind of nice to just get in the right mentality of where we were going. I think if we had gotten right off the plane from LA to Cairo, it would have been really, really crazy and rough. Um, but Cairo is a very interesting city. It's There's a lot of people. There's a very big pollution problem. And I noticed that right when we got off the plane that like... E we walked down onto the tarmac, you know, it was, it was, um, so right when the door opened, you could kind of smell all the air and everything and it just hit you. It was like a heavy, you know, very, very, almost like stung your eyes a little bit kind of pollution. So it was, it was really tough. Um, yeah, very, very thick pollution. Yeah. Um, you have to get a, an entry visa when you get there. I think at the time it was 20 US dollars. Yeah, 20 or 25 US dollars. I don't know what it is now, but we, it was just very overwhelming getting there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm happy that we didn't just go right in <laughs> from yeah. LA because we, we had a little bit of time to adjust to the, to the time change. Yep. Um, one thing that is incredible, that is definitely something that you should take into consideration if you're going to go to Egypt. They have Uber, and that is awesome. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit difficult to get at the airport because I don't think the taxi drivers like it very much, so we really had to keep an eye out for um, our driver. Yeah. But we we decided to stay in Giza during our time in Cairo. Mm -hmm. um, to be closer to the pyramids. That's where the pyramids are. They're not actually in Cairo. Right. Uh, Giza is its own separate yeah. um, separate city, uh, suburb, I guess. Yeah, I think it's about an hour and a half drive is what it was from the airport to get to Giza. Something like that. Yeah. But if I would do it again, I think I would stay a couple days in Giza and a couple days in Cairo itself. Mm -hmm. But... It was, it was great because at the time, the hotel we stayed, we stayed at the Le Meridian, which has a great view of the pyramids. It's right there. Um, we got this special Marriott rewards card just for that trip. I talk about my rewards cards a lot, but it was 2,000 points a night. And I got the, the rewards bonus and everything because it was a new card. And it was 2,000 points a night. So it was insanely cheap to stay at this. Yeah four or five star hotel and and it was it was a nice hotel it's really hit or miss with the hotels in egypt we stayed at a four star one later in the trip and it was terrible so like it's a different standard 
than we're used to in the U.S. But I don't know if that um, was a four star. I, I wrote it in my notes that it was four star. Really? And then there's like cockroaches. It was yeah, but we'll get into that a little later. Yes. Um, but yeah, the driving to Giza was definitely crazy. Um, I remember seeing a big truck with a bunch of pallets, probably thousands of eggs that had fallen over on the highway, and they were like trying to clean up all these eggs. Um, and it, there's just, you know, piles of rubble on the side of the road. Um, I think we saw a couple like donkeys and horses. Yeah, you know? if you've ever been to India, it's kind of like that, except not any rickshaws. It's just all vehicles. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's no seatbelts in any of the cars, even the taxis and the Ubers. And there really didn't seem to be any sort of rule of the road or any sort of... Yeah, don't rent a car yourself. Yeah, don't don't, don't rent a do car it. in Egypt. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I remember at one point on that first ride, the Uber driver backed up on the highway, and I just thought that was just yeah, so insane. He misses, they, and it was like really his, sketchy driving. I couldn't imagine driving yourself there. He missed his exit, so he decided to throw it in reverse instead of go around the block. Yeah. But uh, so we took our, our Uber into Giza. And we stayed in Giza for four nights, and we because obviously we wanted to see the pyramids. You can go to the pyramids yourself and either get a guide there or see them yourself. Um, but we opted to ask the uh, front desk at our hotel for a guide. Yeah, they which arranged was it for a us. Really, really good choice. Yeah, we, a lot of times we don't like to get tour guides when we travel. We want to go and experience it for ourselves. Don't do this in Egypt. You're just, you gotta get a guide. It's the only way you're really gonna enjoy yourself, I feel. I would say not necessarily that, that we don't get guides. I say we don't take tours. That's a good way to put it, yeah. Getting, getting guides in places like this is definitely recommended. If, like I said, if you are sensitive to culture shock, take an organized tour in Egypt. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, it, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, it, it's really crazy. But we booked that tour. I think it was a three to four hour tour. It was about 60 US dollars a person. Um, which, which, which was pricey for Egypt. Yeah, definitely pricey, but so worth it. Yes, Because definitely. like going there on your own, you're, you're going to be really hassled yeah. <laughs> um, to buy goods, to take tours. You know, you're just seen as uh, almost a walking ATM when you're a white person. Yes. In this country. There, um, there are scams at the at the pyramids, or at least there were when we went. If you, They'll say, you know, you know, free to get on the camel, free to get on the horse, we'll take you out. Yeah. But then they'll try to charge you when you get off, and then, you know, they'll just keep upping the price. So definitely having a guide at the pyramids, at minimum, is, is uh, recommended. So he was able to broker a deal with a, um, a guy who had some camels that we rode on. Yep. That was, which were... Yep. Fine looking camels, well taken care of. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a really cool experience. I'm really glad we did that. Um, and I remember our guide at one point asked the owner of the camels to speak in English to us, which I thought was really cool because you are definitely seen as somebody that you can take it, be taken advantage of and uh, you know have a lot of money. But like um, I have a comment. Amanda says she's had that walking ATM feeling. And yes, yeah. I, I, I hate to say that, we are incredibly privileged to be middle-class Americans, and we know that for sure. Absolutely. But it was like they invaded our little American bubble space. Yeah. If, <laughs> so I mean, if you if you've traveled to a foreign country, I'm sure you've you know encountered some pushy vendors. It was just. It was next level. I mean, yeah. So insane. I couldn't. As Americans, you're kind of programmed to be like, no, thank you. We're good, you know, and, and polite. But if you said that to them, they would just take it to the next level. They would not leave you alone. I had somebody take the hat off my head and put another hat on my head. Kelly had vendors trying to put scarves on her and yeah, just like, they would grab your arm and pull you. And like, it was, it was really, really tough to, to deal with. And when you have that guide, the guide will kind of be like, okay, we're going to walk through the vendor area now. Like, if you don't want anything, the best thing to do is just put your head down and don't say anything. Like, I know it's going to seem weird, but just ignore them. And, like, they would kind of prep us for, like, okay, this is yeah. the area where if you want to buy anything, like, you can, but they're going to be really pushy. And even in some of the spots, they would be like, if you don't want to go through the tourist area here where they have all the souvenirs, like, let's go around the back end and you don't have to deal with that. 
That being said though, like I said, we are incredibly aware of our financial position and we know that we have much more money than a lot of yeah. people in the world. Um, it just made for a, an exhausting travel experience, I'll say. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't out of malice that they were doing this, they were just trying to make a living. So well, I'll I'll have to put that little note yeah, in because we're incredibly definitely. aware of how fortunate we are. It was just it just made for a very exhausting travel experience. Yeah, it was understanding why they wanted so bad to make the sale. Even mm -hmm. um, our guide found the guy that had the camels, and they took us on a ride, uh, which was incredible, and I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, the guy with the camels wanted to speak to our guide in Arabic, and our guide said, "No, you need to speak in English so they understand what you're saying." Which yeah. You know, obviously they speak Arabic in Egypt, but it was uh, it doesn't a, a, kind of a respectful touch. Yeah, you know? it didn't seem like a lot, but it meant a lot to us just because you, we were definitely seen as outsiders there. And I mean, I would I would have been fine with them speaking Arabic, obviously, because yeah. that's their that's their language. But it was yeah. nice to know that we weren't being um, taken advantage of exactly. as tourists, because that would have been really easy. <laughs> So a little more about the pyramid complex at Giza. There's the three main pyramids that everyone sees in the pictures. Um, you can actually go inside one of those, which is really cool. But then there's also a set of smaller pyramids off to the side. There's nine pyramids there. Um, and you don't really see those smaller ones. Um, nine total? There were I think, yeah, there, I think there's three sections of three pyramids and then the three big ones, which everyone sees in photos. So the camel ride we took past the three main large pyramids and out further into the desert. And that was really neat because we got to see a little more of, of you know, some of the other pyramid sites that you probably wouldn't walk to if you were just exploring on your own, and then got a really good view of the pyramids looking back. Um, another thing that people don't really know about the pyramids is that the city goes right up to them. You know, if you look on one, if you're looking at the pyramids and you look behind you, that's Cairo with like almost 30 million people. You know, it's it's really not what you would expect. On the other side, however, it's just desert. Yeah, it There's really There's nothing is. else. So it's it's definitely pretty crazy. Our guide even took us inside one of the smaller pyr uh, pyramids. Yeah, and that was really cool. You can go, like I said earlier, you can go in one of the bigger pyramids and there was a huge line. Um, we opted away from that one and went into one of the smaller pyramids. I think we paid a couple bucks to go into it, but it was a really, really unique experience. It was a very small, very steep hole that went down into the pyramid. You couldn't stand up at all. I know we had to crouch down to get there. And um, it, it went down and took a really sharp turn and then just opened into one little chamber. And we were the only people down there um, and it was incredibly hot and stuffy mm -hmm. and there wasn't anything in the pyramid. It was just a big room and there was, you know, a couple big blocks that had maybe fallen over, but it was just a really, really awesome experience. So it was cool. Yeah, that was, that was really neat. One thing you should know about Egypt is tipping culture is king is absolutely the main, yeah. the main thing that goes on it. Uh, oh man, what, what was the word? What was the word? Uh, I don't remember, but they expect you to tip for absolutely everything. I can't remember. There's a word that they use. It's, um, I should have looked this up ahead of time. I can't remember. Anyway, so always, always, always carry small, um, small bills or coins because literally they will want you to tip them for everything. Yeah. Like, like public bathrooms. Like, you'll have to tip to go into the public bathroom. If you want toilet paper in that public bathroom, you'll have to tip for that, yeah, too. Yeah, they take all the toilet paper out of the stalls and, and hoard it and give it out for tips. Yeah. So either take toilet paper on your own or you'll have to tip them. And, for instance, when we went into the pyramids, there were just some guys hanging out around outside. And they were like, oh, we'll take, you know, give us your camera. We'll take your picture. Which always be, you know, Careful mindful that, of that. <laughs> obviously. Because they might run away. But we had a guide and everything, so we were fine. But uh, they, you know, took our picture and then... Yeah, asked for a tip. Yep. Which is not a big deal. Just definitely be aware of that. We weren't prepared for it a couple times, and it's kind of... Bakshish, that's the word. Yeah? <laughs> I was like, Habibi! No, no that's not it. Bakshish, that's, they'll say Bakshish. I swear, even 
in some of the temples that we went to and the other sites, there would be just Egyptian men hanging around. Yeah, they were actually, what we were told were guards, you know, to look over the site. But they, they would just come up to you and they'd be like, oh, did you know that this hieroglyphic means, you know, Osiris or whatever? Yeah. And you go, oh, really? That's really interesting. And then they would go, bakshish, like... Yeah. They would be unprompted anything that they did for you, yeah. whether you whether it was solicited or not, they wanted a tip from you. Yeah, even if it was really, really obvious, be like, you know, did you guys know that this is the pyramids of Giza? And like, yeah. And they're like, okay, well give me a tip. You know, it's like, well <laughs> Yeah, which made it really, really difficult to have interactions with locals yeah. because we got so wary, we'd be like, No, we don't want to talk to anybody because everybody wants money from us. Yeah. But We'll move on from that a little bit. Um, the next day we went to the Egyptian Museum, which was quite an experience as well. Um, we're big history buffs, and that's part of the reason we really wanted to go to Egypt. We wanted to see all these amazing artifacts that you you know see in textbooks when you grow up and on TV shows. Um, so I don't know with the current coronavirus situation what's going on with that now, but we went to the old Egyptian Museum that's in Cairo. Now they have a big, big one that's... I think it's in between Giza and Cairo that's a huge new structure that may be opening soon or may already be open, but we went to the uh, old old school pink one that's in the middle of yep. in the middle of Cairo. And it's a good thing that they are opening a new one because it was really unorganized. Yeah, there were like crates and boxes just all over the place. Yeah. And they were not labeled at all. It was amazing. Yeah, it was, it was so super cool. incredible to see. Um, we saw King Tut's death mask and like all the stuff that you really want to see when you go to Egypt. But there really wasn't a lot of structure to it. Um, I remember we had to buy a pass to have a camera um, and bring it yeah. in, but you could use your phones everywhere. Um, so that yeah, was kind of like weird. A professional camera. Uh, man, I have so many little tips about it. So when we went, I had a friend from high school who had studied abroad in Cairo and then ended up staying there. So we contacted her and we said, hey, we're coming to Cairo. Um, we'd love to meet up with you. And if you have any tips for us, that would be really great because it's our first time in Egypt, blah, blah, blah. So what she told me in an email before we went, she said, everyone's very friendly but they don't always have the best of intentions. And I didn't know what that meant. I, we do now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's a really weird thing to say. But when we went and experienced it, we're like, oh, that's totally what she meant. Yeah. It's not that people have bad intentions. Like we never felt necessarily unsafe or no. in danger or anything like that. No. But for instance, when we went to the, the Egyptian museum, we got to the front gate and we had this guy come up and tell us. He said, it's closed now. Yeah. It's, it's closed. Only tour groups right now. You have to come back in an hour. Yes. Come back in an hour and it'll be open for you. It's closed. You see the buses. It's closed for you right now. You can't go in. Um, yeah. Super believable. So we're like, oh, okay. Well, and I think another person said that too that we talked to. Yeah, like came up and was like, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, you can't go in, it's only tour groups. So yeah. come come with us, you know, yeah, air conditioning, air conditioning. Yeah, it was really, super, really super friendly. And we're just like, oh yeah, you know, come check this out. And we didn't realize that that was a scam. Like they were just so good at convincing us that this place wasn't open. And we, you know, crossed the street with this guy and we're in his shop and we're like, oh my God, we were totally scammed, you know, that's definitely open. They just wanted us to come to the shop. Yeah, they you know? just wanted us to go to their shop or their friend's shop or yeah. whatever. And, and it wasn't, it wasn't like, we, we didn't even feel pressured to no, buy anything. No. We just didn't realize what was happening. And yeah. we kind of got like swindled like, oh, he wants us to go in a shop obviously to buy something. Yeah, and he was super nice the whole time and spoke really good English and just like very friendly person and very trustworthy. And like, yeah. like we said, again, we never felt unsafe. I don't think at any point I felt unsafe. Definitely out of my element a lot, but never unsafe. Yeah, but there this happened a few times in Cairo, though, where, like, we obviously look lost because, you know... It's crazy and... Yeah, and we're, we look like us, and <laughs> <laughs> we stick out like sore thumbs. And someone would come up and try to help us, and 
they wouldn't take us like we were trying to find this one coffee shop and this guy took us on a wild freaking goose chase like all around the the streets of cairo only to end up at a shop yeah that i think that was the only time that i ever was like i don't know about this this is this is not right yeah. i didn't feel unsafe i just felt like you know ah. so that happened a couple of times before we finally got the hang of this one thing so you at least back then you really just couldn't trust what the locals were saying and that's really unfortunate yeah because it made interactions with them really really difficult but eventually we got to go to the egyptian museum it, and it, it was open the whole time yeah and it was incredible it was a really amazing experience um hopefully it's a little more orderly now i know that the bathroom scam you know with the, them taking the toilet paper out that happened in the egyptian museum um which was a little kind of rubbed us the wrong way a little bit that you couldn't even use the bathrooms there but it was just really really incredible to see everything they had some mummies and just it so many incredible artifacts there so proper mummies the king tut death death mask you couldn't hang out in the room for too long and you couldn't yep. take photos of it yep. um we kind of got a sneaky photo from, from like the distance, other room yeah. but uh not anything really good i don't know why you couldn't take photos of it. i don't know either but it was it was definitely worth going and seeing yeah it was and really cool the egyptian museum is like you have it's like pyramids and Egyptian museum. Yeah. You have to go see it. It's if you have to do two things, that would be the two that you want to do. Yeah. And then after the museum, we met up with your friend Shirley, and we went to the bazaar. Oh, the bazaar right? was so cool. I'm so glad we had her though. She's yeah. um, from being there for so long. She spoke Arabic, and I guess Egyptian mm -hmm. Arabic is a lot different than just your standard Arabic. Yeah, and, and we use Google Translate on our phones all the time, but in Egypt, it did not work. No. The Arabic <laughs> the Arabic doesn't translate on Google Translate to Egyptian Arabic, so no. even, we couldn't really communicate. With, if they didn't speak English, we were in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and to get all these places, even from Giza, we took Uber, which eliminated the whole taxi driver problem, which mm -hmm. is, that's kind of a Huge. universal world <laughs> world thing taxi driver scams are so so common yeah um but you didn't have to like you know it was it's this much you don't have to deal with any cash they don't you know mm -hmm. try to raise the price on you and it was very cheap very very cheap yeah. it's it's at least a half an hour i think to get to cairo from giza and it, it was like two dollars and 16 cents or yeah. something super super cheap. definitely the way to go um but the bazaar itself can you pronounce it Oh, Khan Al Khalili. Yep. Um, it's super famous night bazaar, I believe. I don't know if they do a lot during the day, but we were there in the evening and into the night, um, and it was it was really really nice. We we sat at this one little cafe that was in this very narrow street and had I think some type of like mint tea. Yeah, we had tea and this like yogurt dessert. Yep, and I think we might have even smoked a hookah there as well yeah but possibly. they had like music and lantern shops it was yeah. really cool very really, very cool. Really cool i don't know if it would have been the exact same experience if we didn't have somebody that lived there actually i know it wouldn't have been the same experience it would have been a lot different but yeah. it was it was really neat to go and see that yeah it's definitely where you i mean it's very very old um very very old famous bazaar so we I think maybe I would spend a little bit more time in Cairo if we went again because there's really interesting parts of Cairo like yeah. um, like all the Christian churches and the old mosques and uh, different neighborhoods that we really didn't get to see. Um, it's very interesting, very overwhelming city. Yeah, <laughs> but but, it's really, but really great. Cool. I mean, you can't really go to Egypt and not go to Cairo and see the pyramids and the Egyptian oh, yeah. museum and Absolutely. everything. So. have to. We, the, we might have to make this a two-parter because we're almost at a half an hour already. We've only, we could keep talking. We we ate so many foods that I have no idea what they were. I think we ate pigeon. We, we ate did. Pigeon? Yeah, that was a place that we went with Shirley as well. And yeah. we ate stuffed pigeon. And uh, I wrote down a, a fata. I don't know what that is, but we ate that as well. Maybe like grape leaves or something. Yeah, it was... He's got all his notes, and I'm just winging it from yeah. memory. <laughs> we, had a, we had some really amazing food, so... This was, unfortunately, pre-our um, pre Instagram and pre-our YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, we were kind of thinking about doing that stuff at the time, so we do have lots of photos, but they um, are terrible. 
<laughs> they're not super bad, but they're... No, they're not. They're just... Not at the we, part that we are today. We didn't have the eye, and we didn't have quite yeah. the commitment to taking... Um, it was just, they were tourist photos. They weren't, like, yeah. creating beautiful images. Yeah. I would I would go back simply just to get video, photos and videos. Yeah. Make, would you like to make Egypt videos? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would be incredible to go there again. Um I think it is a good idea that we'll split this up into two parts just because we are almost reaching our... We're trying to do these at about a half an hour. Yeah, we don't um, want to bore you too much. Yeah, so the second part of our trip, we went and flew down to Aswan, which is very far in the south of Egypt, and then we took a cruise up the Nile River to Luxor. Um, and that was a really incredible experience, but we'll kind of talk about that in next week's episode of this um so Stacey says thanks for today's travel fix oh thanks for watching yeah, stacy hey definitely same time next week yep. for, for i guess our our second part yeah so one thing that we'd like to do with these talks is just give a little bit of advice to kind of recap everything before we sign off um so if you're thinking about going to egypt at some point absolutely do it um be prepared it's not super relaxing, at least the way that we did it, it wasn't very relaxing. I'm sure there's some places on the Red Sea that are very relaxing, um, but it's a big culture shock. Extremely rewarding. One of the most rewarding trips I've ever been on. I definitely won't ever forget it. Um, no, no, it was, it was something. <laughs> yeah. So uh, definitely use Uber when you go. Don't forget that Tipping culture is huge, and to have small bills because you will be expected to tip for everything. Absolutely everything. Yep. Um, you can get a cheap um, SIM card at the airport. Yep, that's a must as well to see where you're going um, and have internet while you're there, which is huge. Um, Probably really important. What was the other thing? Must sees in Cairo, uh, at least that we saw with Conal, Conal Khalili. Bazaar, yep. uh, Egypt Museum, whatever one is open right now, mm -hmm. or once travel is and the something pyramids. we can do, the pyramids for sure. Obviously. I would stay um, in Giza for a couple of days just to be closer to the pyramids. Um, hotels are affordable, are very affordable. Yep. And if you see a really nice hotel that's like only twenty more dollars. Book it. Book it. Stay yeah. there. We'll have don't try we'll to have cut, a couple of stories for next time. Don't try to cut corners on that because it they can makes get, a difference. They can get a little hairy yes. at times. Um, and then the last tip I wanted to reiterate was um, hire a guide if you're going to go to these sites because they really make a huge difference. Yeah, really, really makes. You're a gonna difference. you're gonna pay a little more, but it's gonna be such a more enjoyable experience for you. So. Yeah, we didn't have a guide for the whole trip, um, and we didn't really need one because we're more experienced travelers. But if you are not used to going to places like this, go on an organized tour. Yeah. Is well worth it. And um, you'll you'll still have an amazing time. It's just it's not a place that's very easy to travel on your own. No. If you're experienced, you'll probably do fine, but yeah. if you aren't, <laughs> yeah. call on the door. Yep. So, anything yeah, else? Worth it. I don't think so. Um, yeah, we did not mean for this to be a two-part talk. but No, no, but we are at a half hour and we've only talked about half the trip. So yeah. that was our talk on Cairo, Egypt. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week to continue and talk about Aswan and Luxor and our cruise down the Nile. Yes. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss part two of this talk or any of our other travel videos. And this is Kevin and Kelly from The Awkward Tourist. Bye guys, thanks a lot. Thanks. <laughs>